Welcome to Pure Mind Magic, the show to evolve your mind. Our mind is the most powerful thing we have, but no one teaches us how to use it. When we find out how, we're ready to create magic in life and in business. Learn real mindset secrets from brilliant minds around the world to change your mindset and income level forever. With every decision you make, you create your future. What is your next move? Now, welcome your host. Host, international magician, speaker, and podcast performance consultant, Jennifer S. Royal. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Pure Mind Magic and this episode with my guest from Boston, Lisa Lentino. She is a real mindset expert when talking about how to get free from mind programming and using your mind in a more constructive way. She can tell us how we can program our mind that it helps us and also how the programming we have in our mind actually creates our lives. Lisa is the CEO of the new platform, The Coaching Connector, where you can find your ideal coach no matter where you are in the world. And also, in case you are a coach, you can set up a profile there and get found by clients interested in your coaching or consulting field. So stay tuned for this amazing interview. And in case you are new to this show, then please go ahead and subscribe to Pure Mind Magic. You just have to hit one button to do that wherever you are listening to Pure Mind Magic. And with that, you will never again miss a new episode that is coming up. A quick tip before we start the interview, in case you are interested in podcasting and starting your own podcast this year, because at the moment podcasting is really hot and it's a really hot marketing tool, despite the industry you are in. So, I mean, no matter which industry, podcasting is hot and you can find out all the chances and opportunities it holds for you when you have this quick read of my book, How Podcasting Can Change Your Life, Unleash Endless Possibilities. This is available from Amazon worldwide as Kindle version, as well as paperback, whatever you prefer. And there will be a link directly below this episode to grab your copy today. And now we are all set to dive into today's interview with my guest, Lisa Lentino. Hi, Lisa. Welcome to Pure Mind Magic. Hi, Jennifer. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's a great honor to have you as the absolute mind expert on this show. You are just a perfect match for pure mind magic. And we will reveal a lot of mind secrets and how our mind works and how we can program our mind to our advantage today. But before we do so, Lisa, can you introduce yourself to our listeners, please? Sure. Um, well, J Jennifer. I'm a, uh, you know, a clinical psychologist, but I have a, a passion for psychology. I have a passion for helping people live their ideal lives or to, to self-actualize. And so that drives me in my, my clinical practice. It drives me in, in writing books. And it's also um, been the passion behind creating the, the coaching connector. So that's, that's really what I'm about is helping people learn how to get their minds out of their way and figure out what is their ideal, their, their, um, the purpose that they were designed to fulfill in this life, and then showing them not only how to get their mind out of their way, but how to program it consciously so they can create their ideal life. So that's what I'm, that's really what I'm about. Sounds pretty amazing and really helpful to navigate through life. So maybe Lisa, let's start on explaining how the mind works. Sure. What I've come up with over the course of, you know, my practice and studying psychology and my own, uh, you know, reflections is a three-phase philosophy for living your ideal life. And the first phase is what I call freeing yourself from the database of your mind or what some people refer to as the ego. 
The second uh, phase is discovering your true self. And the way I, the metaphor that I always use when I'm talking about your true self is that of an acorn. And just like an acorn, you know, came into the world with the full potential of an oak tree, every human being comes into the world with a unique set of potentials, both physically, artistically, musically, personality-wise, that um, that they bring to the world, and, and no one else in the world can can fulfill that unique purpose. So the second phase is discovering what's in, like the way I describe it is like, what's in your acorn? And then the last phase of the process is what I call learning to think constructively. And the reason that I really emphasize the word constructively is that our minds were always supposed to be a tool for us to create our ideal lives. But what happens more times than not is that we end up being trapped by our minds rather than being in a position to utilize them to create, you know, uh, to self-actualize or to fulfill our purpose. And so when I'm working with people and when I'm in my writing, what I'm trying to do is help them through that process of freeing themselves from their mind, discovering who their, their true purpose. And then once they're grounded in that purpose, then teaching them to go back to the database but this time program it in a way that actually helps their cause. And most of us were never taught, you know, how the mind actually works, how important the thinking that we engage on a a moment to moment basis is, and, or even like the constructive models for maximizing our personal professional lives. Hmm. I see. So, how does the programming we have in our mind affect our lives? So let me um, explain it this way. It's like, from my perspective, we're all on the same journey, whether we realize it or not. When we're first born, we're grounded in what we call our, our unique consciousness or our true self. And that's, that's what I refer to as the acorn. That unique consciousness enters the world with two incredible tools at its disposal, your body that it's embodied in, and then the database of your mind. Now, that database of our mind has two memory systems that it uses to get information into it. And the first one is what we call our explicit or our conscious memory. And that's what most people are referring to when they say they're remembering something. So if I remember what my, you know, if I say I'm remembering what my grade school building looked like, I'm consciously calling up that memory. I know I'm doing that. And I also know there's distance between grade school and now. And I can thank my explicit memory for that. Now, in order for me to have done that, at some point in time, I had to consciously pay attention to what my grade school building looked like. Now that, you know, conscious, smart memory, that doesn't really come on board until around age two to four, really when language starts coming on board. And that's why most, you know, that's why we don't have any memories from the first year of our lives. So we have this explicit memory, which of the database of our mind, only about five to 10% of it is dedicated to this conscious, smart part of our mind. The other memory system, which often makes our lives more interesting, is our implicit or subconscious memory system. Now, that memory system has been there since the day we were born. And most people say at you know, some point in the womb. Now, there's very key differences between our explicit and our implicit memory that people really need to understand in order to really master their own mind. The implicit memory, unlike the explicit memory, does not require our conscious attention. So from the moment we're born, imagine it's just a sponge that's continuously collecting information from all the interactions you might have with your parents, with your caregivers, and eventually with your you know, friends, school, society. 
it's continuously collecting uh, data based on those interactions. Now, the first thing that the mind does is it forms mental models about yourself, about relationships, about the world in general. Then as you, as you start growing up and you develop the ability for language, it starts putting words to those mental models. So uh, in, eventually it forms what we call our core beliefs. So the core beliefs about ourselves, about relationships, about emotions, conflict, the world. So examples of core beliefs might be I'm lovable and worthwhile for just for being who I am. Or I need to do something in order to be, quote unquote, good enough. Um, another example is like for emotions. Emotions are a normal part of being human or only certain ones are, are allowed or, um, you know, we, we have to try to avoid them at all costs. So what happens is when we first come into the world, we're grounded in that unique consciousness, listening to our innate inclinations, our passions, our interests. But as the database starts collecting more and more information, particularly, you know, as we as language really explodes, this program becomes more and more, uh, you know, of a, a significance in our lives. And instead of staying grounded in the acorn or our true self, what happens is we literally get sucked into the database and we start living life from inside the database or our ego, thinking that what it's telling us about us is absolute truth, as if it came down, you know, on some stone tablets or something. What we forget is that that programming reflects all the relative health or dysfunction of our families, schools, society, media, and of course now the internet. Now, the journey that we're all on is we're trying to get back from to, to that unique consciousness. Because once you get trapped in the database, Jennifer, life looks very different. It's like it's almost like a, a perpetual job where you're you're trying to, uh, you know, ensure your self-worth. You're trying to, you know, follow this programming of what you need to be successful, happy to be, quote unquote, good enough. As long as you're living life trapped in there, you can have moments, fleeting moments of happiness, but you can't ever find true contentment. In order to do that, we need to help you free yourself from that programming. Realize that's not who you really are. Connect you back to that unique consciousness or acorn and realize that you have inherent self-worth simply for being a unique human being that has a purpose that only you can fulfill. So I kind of the way I present it to people is imagine you're on a spectrum of how connected to the acorn or your true self you are versus how trapped in the database you are. And people fall on all parts of that spectrum. So, but the one key difference that I, um, that, you know, I, I kind of describe it as like it's a fork in the road is how the database versus being connected to the acorn defines your self-worth and this core belief of am i you know inherently worthwhile or is my self-worth conditional is the biggest fork in the road in terms of whether or not you get trapped in the database versus you get connected uh you know or grounded in the acorn and the thing about self-worth and as I explain this to people is like self-worth is such a fundamental psychological need we have. It's not like, oh, geez, that would be nice to have in life. As human beings, we are so we understand there's this primitive part of our mind that knows that our survival depends upon someone, be it, you know, some caretaker thinking we're worthwhile enough to take care of. 
If not, we understand that we don't have um, any chance of surviving. So our minds are very in tune to whether or not we're quote unquote good enough. And when that self-worth is in question, people will spend their entire lives trying to obtain and maintain, uh, obtain and then maintain this false sense of self-worth. And that's, you know, unfortunately, when you look around, you see so many people who are, who are on that wild goose chase. And the ego or the database, instead of, you know, uh, that you eventually find that self-worth, it then just kind of moves the line farther down. And you never actually get that sense of contentment that we're really all looking for. So the, the problem with the ego and the database, I think it's the most fundamental problem, is that it defines your self-worth conditionally. It's going to try to tell you that your self-worth is based on how you compare or something external to yourself. And that could be, you know, your GPA, it could be your earning potential, it could be, you know, prestige, status, you name it. Something external to yourself or how you compare. And as long as you're buying into that conditional sense of self-worth, it feels like your self-worth is built on a house of cards. And the problem with that is that even if things are going quote unquote well in your life, there's always this undercurrent of insecurity or anxiety or a low grade depression. Because at any point in time, you know, if one or a few of those cards, you know, starts really shaking, the whole, the whole thing could come tumbling down. When you adopt that fundamental belief that your self-worth is unconditional, that's when your life changes. Because no longer is your uh, you know, job in life to try to obtain and maintain that self-worth. Now you get to focus on discovering what is in my acorn. You know, what innate talents, uh, strengths, aspects of my personality, what did I come into this world to do. And then I get to just focus on figuring out what do I need to develop those gifts? And then how can I share them with the world in some way, shape or form? And that fundamental belief, that's what I changed personally. You know, I spent the, I tell people, I spent the first probably 18, 19 years of my life firmly trapped in my own database. You know, I, I grew up in a very loving family, but like many, I fell into that trap of thinking that my self-worth was conditional. And so I dutifully, you know, I worked very hard in high school. I got, you know, very good grades. I was a three-sport athlete, three-sport captain. I was a class officer. I got into Boston College early. I was checking off all these, you know, check marks here, trying to, to figure out how to be, quote, unquote, good enough. And then I remember I was, it was freshman year uh, at Boston College, and I remember specifically one day I'm um, walking along campus, and I stopped, and I said to myself, there has got to be more to this life thing than this. There has just got to be. I mean, I spent, you know, four years in high school working very hard, largely being anxiety-driven in order to, to get to, to, to college, and then I'm saying to myself, okay, what are you, you're supposed to spend four more years doing the same just to try to get to grad school and just, you know, get, keep on this like kind of, you know, uh, rat race that, that I felt like I was on. And that's when, you know, I, I was always studying psychology from the beginning of undergraduate, but then I, I started my own counseling and I've always been an avid reader and did my own self-reflection. And that's when I was able to kind of fundamentally say, um, this is not the way I'm going through life. And when I shifted that core belief in that my self-worth was unconditional, so that I was no more or no less worthy than any other human being, 
that's when my entire life changed. It went from feeling like a job to feeling like, you know, exciting, engaging. And now I'm driven by passion rather than anxiety. And that's really what I want to help as many people as possible discover. And, you know, and I just I do it in various ways through my practice, through the coaching connector, through writing. But that is ultimately what I want people to experience. Mm, that is really mind blowing, Lisa, I would say. So do you have some practical tips for our listeners on how they can implement that and develop a different relationship to the self-worth? Right. So the, well, in one of the, the, and this is why I believe in the power of uh, coaching and it could be a coach, it could be a mentor, it could be a counselor because once the, the ego or the database has kind of got a grip on you, the thing about it is it does not like giving up control. And once you start veering away from it and you try to, um, you know, accept a different belief that your self-worth may be unconditional or you try to go outside your comfort zone saying, you know, geez, I'd like to try this new career or I'd like to try this business idea. The way the ego works is it may allow you to, you know, take a few steps outside your comfort zone. But if it thinks you're fundamentally going to, to do something that's different from the way it's programmed, One of the phenomenons is that it increases feelings of fear, doubt, guilt, and insecurity, at least in my experience. And as those feelings of fear, doubt, guilt, and insecurity um, increase, 99% of the people fall back in line. And they, they fall back into their own ways, uh, old ways of, of behaving. And this is why many people find it difficult to change. Well, and that's where I really see the power of coaching because that accountability, that support, that encouragement, that like perspective a, a coach or a mentor can bring to say, no, 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 we, we, we knew the ego, your database was going to do this. We were prepared for the self-sabotage. And what we're going to do is we're going to Uh, continue to take constructive action in spite of that. And it's that, like I said, the, the support and the accountability a coach can bring is what often is what's needed to help break free of that programming once and for all. I absolutely agree with you here. And I think really it's so important to have a coach and have someone seeing the blind spots around you and in your mind yourself can't see and also get access to the subconscious mind. So I think this are, these are really the important points. And now, Lisa, you mentioned it uh, two times, the coaching connector, and you are the CEO of this new platform, helping uh, people finding the right coach. So can you tell us more about the story on the coaching connector? Sure. The, the purpose of the coaching connector um, was because, like I said, because the ego of the database Uh, can be so sneaky and powerful. Um, I what I wanted to do was create a platform where we can introduce the power of coaching to as many people as possible. And with the coaching connector, we do that in various ways. Um, if you go to the the our website, which is the coachingconnector.com, you'll see many um, articles on just you know helping you deal with some of the challenges that living life from the database will, will present. So we wanted to, you know, both inform people, deliver value by content. We also um, are going to be, we also uh, recently going to be launching our podcast, which is guiding you through the maze, because the way I like to, to figure it is the database sets up this maze that we're all trying to find our way through here. So, um, Our podcast is designed to help people guide you through your through the maze into your ideal personal and professional life. 
Then the other thing is we have a directory of coaches, both, you know, uh, executive coaches, life coaches, business coaches, who, and we have very detailed profiles because I really wanted people to be able to browse the directory and really get a sense of what the coaches might be like, uh, what their their uh, expertise is, and how they might be able to help someone on their journey here. So it's both an informative site just to help people, but then to connect them possibly to you know an ideal coach to help them on their own journeys. That is such a great mission you are on there, helping so many people with this amazing platform and also with your new podcast, Guiding You Through the Maze, because I think this is really like a puzzle in your mind and finding right. the right way out. And Lisa, you are also an author of the book Constructive Thinking. Can you give us some insights on your book? Sure. Um, you know, the, the book is called Constructive Thinking, How to Grow Beyond Your Mind. And what it really does is it outlines the my whole philosophy, the, the three-phase philosophy, um, and gives you step-by-step, -step, uh, you know, uh, techniques for helping you kind of move yourself along that process. The other um, tool I have is called the Constructive Thinking Profile which goes right along with, with my book. And the, what the constructive thinking profile is, it's a self-assessment tool that goes through more constructive versus dysfunctional models of thinking in the several key areas of life. And so it's just a tool where uh, you know clients or people can take the tool and you'll get a report that gives you maybe some hint of geez, you know, maybe in this area of life, like regard to maybe money or stress, you know, I really picked up some, you know, less functional ways of thinking. And then I also have a series of supplements that will introduce you to more constructive ways of thinking. Because most of us didn't get constructive ways of thinking in all aspects of life. And one of the ways to, to ask yourself, you know, maybe the quality of the, the think, the programming you inherited is to look at different aspects of your life. And the ones you are most satisfied with, you'll, you'd likely got more constructive programming. But the ones that you're less satisfied with and are, you know, struggling with, that's a good indication that, okay, geez, maybe I have to do, you know, some more work on figuring out constructive models and then programming my mind you know, uh, more effectively in those regards. Mm. The, mm. Makes so much, so much sense. And in the other book that I, you know, uh, that kind of came about for me, and it was a process of me listening to my own, own acorn <laughs> is the, is actually a children's book, which is called the littlest acorn. And it was one of those things, Jennifer, and I'm sure you can relate to this where I never intended to write a children's book. I don't, I work with adults, I, you know, older, older adolescents and adults in my practice, but it was one of those things that just kept coming to my mind and coming to my mind. And I, so I went to the, I, I live uh, outside of Boston and I went to the ocean one day and I, I just felt like I kind of just downloaded the, the book. And uh, then I found a, a wonderful illustrator, uh, Connie Lovett, who I, uh, who I felt like really captured the, the story. Uh, but The whole purpose of The Littlest Acorn is to help send the message to as many children as possible that instead of trying to compare yourself to others, the key to living a truly content life is to look within, a pre if, discover your, your gifts and talents, figure out how to uh, develop those, and then share them with the world in some way, shape, or form. So it's it's the same message that I do with adults. It's just it, my my thought is like, geez, if we can get this message to as many children as possible, then hopefully we can avoid, uh, you know, them getting trapped so trapped in in the database. So their their journey to to their true self will be um, facilitated. 
Mm, very nice and great that you created this other book too for children to really start from the beginning getting the programming in your mind right. right. So talking about the coaching connector, because I know we do have a lot of coaches and consultants in the audience, how is it possible for coaches to become part of this platform? Uh, it's very simple. You just go to the, the coaching connect, www.thecoachingconnector.com. And there you'll see a um, get started. If you're a coach, you'll just see, you know, a place where you can get started and, um, you know, join the community. And we really want to, you know, help people un understand where we're really our community. We're trying to help uh, coaches both develop thriving practices so they can positively impact as many people as possible. So if you, they just go to the get started uh, area, then they can sign up, they can put their profile up and we can, you know, introduce themselves to, to the community and um, get started on sharing their work with as many people as possible. Amazing. So sounds really easy to accomplish just a few clicks away from your new new profile as a coach on the right. coaching connector. So Lisa, let's have a look on the other side for everyone in the audience listening, who is thinking and being inspired by what you said about ha having a coach helping them to break through. How is it possible to find the ideal coach on the coaching connect connector? Right. So it, it's again, it's a very simple process. You just go to the website and you'll see an area where it says, are you, you an individual looking to get to the kind of next level of your, your, your life in terms of uh, your more ideal life. And if you uh, just click on that, then you, you'll be able to, to start browsing and do a search based on, you know, your, the, the issues that you're, you're dealing with, the type of coach. Um, so you could then just do a search of the, of the database. We also encourage you to, to read the articles on the site because we have coaches writing the articles and it's a great way of kind of getting a sense of, of who they are and how they can potentially, um, you know, help, help the, uh, you know, visitors. So, um, But very easy to start browsing any coach and um, searching for the ones, you know, that, that might really help them in their journey. Mm, very nice. So, Lisa, because you are the expert, what would you say? Because everyone in the audience wants to listen he or wants to learn here secrets on the Pure Mind Magic podcast. So can you reveal a few mind secrets on how we can improve our programming, develop be better habits and just create a little bit more magic in our lives? Sure. Uh, one thing, one uh either a trick or insider information on the mind that I like to share with people. And this is why I use the term database is that what most people don't understand is that the most powerful part of our mind is our subconscious mind, but it's not the smart part of our mind. And the reason that I use the term database is because our subconscious mind really functions like a computer. So when you program a computer, it doesn't say to yourself, geez, are you really sure about that last command? Instead, it just dutifully create, you know, uh, produces an output based on that programming. And our subconscious mind actually functions much in the same way. And most people don't uh, understand how important it is to pay attention to the language that we are uh, in our thoughts, that we are engaging on a daily basis. So for example, if I was about to start a long day of work, right? And I had the thought, I am tired. What my subconscious mind hears is like, okay, you want me to create a state in which you are tired. So every day, if I dwell on that, that thought and I keep thinking that, what my subconscious mind is going to do is actually make me more tired. And so when I 
talk to people about learning to become expert constructive thinkers. The thing that I focus on is the, your mind, the database, was supposed to be a tool for you to create your ideal life. So the only thing you ask yourself when, it, when you're gauging a thought is, is this thought helping my cause? Don't focus on whether or not that thought is true or not. It might be at a, you know, for any particular morning, I, it might be true that I, I'm tired, but if I'm about to start a long day, at no point in time is that helpful. And so if I saw that thought, I would literally just kind of say to myself, okay, irrelevant, moving on, like not helpful. And then I'd stop and say, okay, what is a more constructive thought that would help my cause today? And I might focus on, you know, the, the clients that I'll be seeing, what I enjoy working, you know, why I enjoy working with them. I will then consciously step back and shift my thinking to a more constructive thought. Mm, that is a really smart trick you are revealing there. Anything else? Um, let me think. So, uh, well, in terms of the, the, the constructive models, one of the things, too, where you, you learn is that our minds, um, and, and this is where I, I, I talk to people, it's like an, uh, a metaphor or example I often use is like sometimes when we're caught in a negative space sometimes, right? our minds can function almost like a naughty little puppy. And the what I tell people is like, if I had uh, a, a naughty puppy in my office and I wasn't watching it, you know, something's either going to get chewed on or, you know, uh, mm -hmm. destroyed in some way, shape or form. So our minds are really uh, like the same thing. It's like we have to learn to watch our minds like a hawk. So check in with yourself throughout the day saying, wait a minute, where is what what is my mind doing? What is it thinking here? And learn to really become a keen observer of it. But a lot of times the people end up saying, oh, geez, you know, I want to stop thinking that. And that would be as difficult as if I had this naughty little puppy and I said, OK, you know, stop chewing my shoe here. I probably wouldn't have much success. I mean, you know, uh, if people have puppies, it's not, not, not going to work too well, right? But if I said to the puppy instead, okay, don't, um, you know, chew my shoe. Instead, come over here. I have a bone for you, okay? So I want you to, to, to chew this instead. Well, puppies like to chew. Minds like to think. So one of the keys is to have some constructive thoughts, be it affirmations, be it, you know, uh, things that you re really want to focus on, work on, have those thoughts in places like, you know, be it on your computer, you know, uh, in the shower, you know, in, in the bathroom in the morning, have those thoughts that you really want to focus on creating in your life in places that you see often so you can, uh, you know, when you when you see your mind behaving, it's very easy to then say, nope, this is where I want to go instead. So it's like, in essence, you're giving your, your mind the quote unquote, the, the, the bone instead of the, the, the shoe when it's misbehaving. So that would be another technique that I would encourage people to try. Also, a very clever trick that you can play on yourself. So, Lisa, I will put all the information on your book, on your podcast, and especially on the coaching connector in the show notes with this episode. And thank you so much for coming on to Pure Mind Magic today and sharing some insights into your brilliant mind and work that you are doing. And I'm really happy to be part of the Coaching Connector because I think it's really amazing what you're doing there. So I would do everything I can to support you in your mission to help as many people as you can 
teaching them on how the mind works and how they can change the programming on the subconscious mind. So thanks again for being my guest today. And I'm looking forward to stay in touch and create some kind of magic with you. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer. It's really been my pleasure and honor to, to share you know, this episode with your audience. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining me today at Pure Mind Magic. I hope you enjoyed the interview with Lisa Lentino and go check out the coaching connector, set up your profile or search for your ideal coach. Also remember, in case you're interested in podcasting, grab a copy of my book, How Podcasting Can Change Your Life, Unleash Endless Possibilities from Amazon. I would be also very happy if you could leave a review for this show, whether it's on Apple Podcasts or directly on Podbean or Stitcher, just leave a comment that would be so great and helps to grow the show. I talk to you again on Wednesday with my midweek motivation, something from the field of magic and entertainment that you can apply in your life and business. Until then, create some magic. 